Hey everyone, and welcome to an episode that's just supposed to be a quick demonstration of some of the things I talked in my last video. So my last video was about distroless containers, and I talked about how they were smaller and more secure and these things, but then I didn't really show how much smaller they are comparatively. And so today's episode is just all about how much of a difference these things make. And I'm not going to be able to touch on security as much because again, it's just lowering your footprint. Um, and maybe I'll get into some of those in the future, but for the most part, we're not gonna be talking about security because we can all agree the fewer things you have installed and running, the more secure your image is. So let's go ahead and dig into just how much smaller these packages are. And when you think about it, I want you to think about how if you had a 100 node cluster, every single node would have this image pulled. And if you have a replica set, it's going to keep the old image for a fast fail back, uh, the old image version. So that being said, you could have like two or three of these images on a single machine. And so it starts to get very big, especially if you have more than one application running. So if you just had one application running on all 100 of those nodes, Probably not a big idea, deal, but if you did this now on 25 applications, the numbers start to get staggering. So let's dig into it. Three, two, one, zero. The No Channel. Okay, so I built a small repository just to demonstrate some of this. It has a really small Go application and there's a make file that will build your, build it and build out all the images for you. And so let's go ahead and look at that. Now, the reason it is you have this Go application is it's actually an HTTP server because in the end, I actually ran some performance tests too for CPU and memory. Um, and we'll, but we'll get back to those a little bit later. I didn't do any file IO or any of those types of things. So this was not a comprehensive performance test of the images. Uh, but there's actually some interesting things that I found from this. So. Um, We'll dig into that in a little bit. Other than that, you basically have a bunch of different Docker files. Uh, most of the time people just use Docker file. I'm using the dot Docker file here because I have a bunch in the same directory. And then a make file. This make file goes and builds the Docker images for you. So you can do this. Now these, these Docker files are also built to Docker Hub. So if you wanna go ahead and deploy them, you can. Um, as you'll notice here, I have deployments and these deployments use the ones from Docker Hub. So you can actually go ahead, pull this repository and use this deployment in a Kubernetes cluster and it would work. Now, I don't know why you would want this application running in it. This was more for my test purposes, but if you want to replicate some of my tests, feel free. The other thing I used, I used JMeter um, to, to run the tests. If, it was just what I know. I don't know that it's necessarily one of the better ways of checking uh, pods performances or containers performances. And that's actually something I'm going to dig more into next year is just how to measure performances of containers. And I'm actually building some tools for it. This is the project. It's a pretty simple project. Again, you link to the project is down below, uh, but let's get into how much smaller these are. So, you can see here, our base is just the base build. Everything uses this base build and then it does a multi-stage for all the other ones. So you can see this base build here and yeah, pretty cool. It's very simple. We build the Go, the main Go app and we move it up and we run it. And this is all done in the Golang um, latest. Everything else uses the same thing. It uses the exact same thing, except you notice that we don't run the command here. Uh, we actually do a from Alpine uh, root, and then we just copy over our application. The other small interesting thing here you'll notice is this right here. This basically builds everything that your application needs statically into it. I don't really know the dependencies for all of the Go stuff, and I could have figured it out. Uh, but this was easier to do this because if you remember right, that this here won't have any of the stuff to run Go. So you can't really use it. 
And all of these follow the exact same thing. This uses the distro list base Debian 10. Again, distro list and Debian in the same sentence. It's fantastic. Um, so this uses the Google one. Uh, this uses the Alpine. And then I have a Scratch one that uses the uh, Scratch from Scratch in uh, that Docker provides. This is like their most bare one. So let's go ahead and build all these and see just the size requirements. Now, if you come here and do Docker images, there's just a bunch of images. So if you're ever wanting to know how to clean up this, you can just use shell expansion to do it. Uh, so let's do Docker RMI, or you're gonna force it because I don't really care. None of these, this is just my dev machine. None of these are needed. And we're going to do Docker images, dash Q. So the Q for images is just going to list out their image ID. And so basically, this is going to expand out to all the images IDs, and we're going to remove them. Pretty simple. Docker images. And you see we have none. So let's now run make. Now, since we deleted all of the images, it's going to have to download those base ones again. So we use like Golang and Alpine. So it's going to download those images because they're required in our bases. Bases? All your base are belong to us bases. All right, and now it's building out the container. So now we should be able to see our images. And here you go. So here are our four containers. And you'll notice that our base image, so the one that doesn't use any multi-stage, is 846 megabytes. Remember, this doesn't contain the kernel. Uh, I've seen kernel deployments with user space that are smaller than this. This base Golang image has a ton of crap in it, okay? Now we'll go to our Alpine. Our Alpine only uses 12 megabytes, 12 megabytes compared to 846. But it gets better. Now, this is the Google Debian 10 distro list. It uses 25. And then we have a our scratch, which it comes in at the lowest at six megabytes. So imagine going from almost a gig per image to six megabytes. And this has our application built in it. And it runs. I've deployed all of them, run tests on all of them. They all work. And so this is how much space you can be saving by using multi-stage builds as well as uh, these distro lists or bare containers. Um, now, I don't use Scratch as much. I think Scratch is more designed for people that are building their own flavors. It really has just a kernel, basically. And Alpine is more of the desired. Now, it's interesting. The Google one has a lot more stuff in it. I haven't looked at exactly what it has in it. The Google distro list one is about double the size. And on top of being double the size, um, it actually can run Go applications without uh, statically compiling it like I did for the others. So it obviously has a lot more stuff in it. Um, I, I haven't dug into exactly how all of these people build their bare containers, but this was more of a uh, test to see the different size and show them. So you guys don't just have to take my word when I say that they're a lot smaller. They are a lot smaller. Their surface, their attack vectors have been diminished greatly, basically just to your app. If you try to exec into one of these, you can't because there is no shell. It has just what you need. Well, I don't know about this one, but these definitely have just what you need and nothing more. And this is fantastic. OK, so let's move on. How do they do performance wise? Interestingly enough, there is not a huge difference performance wise. They all ran roughly about the same. Now, I didn't do file IO, so some of these things could change and I could see a difference. But one thing that was surprising is this scratch image here for some reason didn't perform nearly as well as the other ones. Everything else ran close to the same. And this scratch image actually had worse performance. Now, that being said, it had the best memory usage, whereas the rest of them performed very, very close enough that it was 
arguably they perform the exact same. Uh, so that's something I would have to look into as to why it might have performed worse. Um, these small ones, the Deb 10 and Alpine performed slightly better on memory. We're talking about 10 to 20 megabytes of memory consumption less than the than the base, um, which is is decently significant because you're talking about we only ran one container. So if you're running a lot of these, that 10 megs is going to add up. So the memory consumption was something to think about. The, um, it doesn't sound you know, a, a server under load doesn't sound because this was under load. There was about 500 requests um, being made in or 500 threads making requests. So it, it was under a substantial amount of load, even though the request was easy to handle. All of your containers did this, then you could actually be, you know, a couple gigs of extra memory. So it did save a little bit on memory, though the thro throughput and CPU seem to be the exact same which I would have expected because while you might have extra things installed in the user space, they're not actually running. So, all right, that was it. This was my quick demonstration. I hope that, you know, this was a good follow up to my other one where I uh, maybe failed to cover everything uh, in depth and show off just how much smaller they are. And again, think about a hundred nodes. You're almost going to be saving at least 800 megabytes. If you have 10 pods, each with one container. So 10 pods, each with one container, each with a replica set. So it has two versions of that image. You're talking about almost 20 gigs of storage that you're saving by using these on, uh, on that cluster. That starts to add up, especially if these are on your SSDs and fast storage, so. And that has nothing, that doesn't even touch the security benefits that you would get from running one of these. So anyways, here you go. This is it. Go check out, check it out. If you wanna make a pull request and add some other tests or you know, add tests that do file IO, be my guest, uh, I would love it. Otherwise, uh, enjoy this video and I hope to see you around for the next video. I'm working on uh, a couple videos that I think you guys will really like. Um, they're actually taking up a lot of my time. I have some time off. And so you really should stick around for those because they're probably going to be some of my best videos yet. All right. I will see you guys later. I would say next week because I do one about every single week. So probably next week. We'll see. Next week is, is Christmas. So maybe next week if I get it done this week. <laughs> All right. Bye. And if you didn't like this video, if you really, 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 really did not like this video, go ahead, subscribe, stick around, and see if these videos get any better for science. That's my, like, ending. I have to do it. I just have to. I like it. Some Oddly, I like that way too much. I should not like it that much.